What's going on everybody? Welcome back. So this is a video that has been requested in little bits and pieces, kind of wondering how I set up my franchise mode, what settings I use, and how I like to play franchise in Madden 20. So this video is going to be 10 steps for setting up the perfect franchise for Madden 20 for realism. Before we hop in, please remember to hit that like button down below. Helps me out more than you can really know. All right, so our first step here is actually an optional step, but it's something I very highly recommend, and that is to use my custom roster for franchise mode. And I won't go into all of the details as to why in this video, but long story short, the ratings are more spread out. And I do this to better replicate how these players' values should be perceived based on real life, as well as just better replicating the team building challenges that teams face in real life. I find the vanilla EA roster a little too easy to team build with, and it leads to a a little easier, more boring franchise experience. And, you know, EA's roster is fine, but a lot of the things that go into their ratings are pleasing the players in real life. Marketing plays a role into their ratings. They have to please the competitive community, the play now community, the casual community. There's way too many factors going into their ratings. They're simply not designed for use in a realistic franchise. That is where my roster comes in. So how you're gonna get this roster is you're gonna go from the main menu here, go to share and manage files, download community files. Now, if you're on Xbox here, it's a little easier. I'm just gonna scroll over to roster here and then sort by downloads and right at the top there, TFG football, TFG real 2020. That is gonna be the file you want. Now this file is on PlayStation. So if you would like it, it is available under the same name. Now it's being worked on. I'm lucky to have a community working on the file for me because I don't have the time to do it myself on two platforms, but Drex is working on this file. I think it's a little bit of a work in progress, but I think this weekend it should be pretty much live. I will post his Twitter in the description of this video so you can communicate with him if you're on PS4 and would like this on PlayStation 4. PC is still uh, up for consideration, I suppose. Download file is how you're gonna get it. I already have it, so uh, you're gonna make sure you have it downloaded and then make sure you load the file. If you don't load the file, you're just gonna get EA's vanilla roster. So now that that's taken care of, we're gonna go over to franchise. And I actually suggest doing an offline franchise. I'll tell you why later in the video. Make sure you select use active roster your roster will import and you're good to go. So step two here is gonna be walking through the settings for the franchise, pretty basic for setting up a franchise, obviously. So the first thing you're gonna do is pick your starting point. Definitely do preseason if you want the realistic feel. Then you gotta pick your role. Uh, you can go coach or owner. If I pick an owner, it's gonna make me uh, create the owner. So I'm gonna skip that for now. You know, owner's just gonna give you a little more flexibility with you know moving your team, building a new stadium, setting your finances, um, having to make money for your team. It's a its a different experience. I, I would recommend doing owner if you're offline, but either way. And then for the league settings, difficulty we'll get into in step three, but this is gonna be more about the actual settings here. Uh, pretty much everything you're gonna keep the same. Uh, there are some changes here. You're gonna go every four weeks for player progression. You can leave these the same. Now for quarter length, I go 11 minutes, whoops, with 16 seconds clock runoff. That tends to give you um, nice realistic stats, but also the games don't take forever. It takes about 40 minutes to play a game, which is fine by me. Again, that's, you know, all preference there. And then these are all gonna stick to manual. Tutorial pop-ups, uh, pop-ups I turn off, auto progress players off, and fill roster off as well. You're gonna want this off because if you have it on and your team needs a backup quarterback and you have eight wide receivers that you may wanna keep, they're gonna maybe cut that wide receiver to sign a backup quarterback. If you do this, it should allow you to make those moves uh, within your own decisions. So we're good to go. And our next step here is a hot topic, sliders. Now I always tell people I'm a roster guy, not a sliders guy. I do have my own sliders that I play on, and this is based on kind of my own experience. Just kind of little tweaks I make. These are for use for all Madden. You know, there's lots of slider sets out there. These are the sliders I recommend. I'm just scrolling through 
Um, but again, play around with these as you please based on your own skill level, based on what you're looking for. Uh, you know, you're just gonna have to maybe tweak them a little bit depending on how it is, but those do work for me. And then I actually haven't found too many imbalances with the XP system at this point. Uh, maybe there are that I'm not noticing, but it, it does seem pretty well balanced. So I actually don't touch these at all. And that's really it for sliders. So our next step here is again, something you're going to have to do if you use that custom roster. If you used EAs, this is actually not a thing you have to do, but Unfortunately, when I edit a custom roster, they do not give me the ability to trade draft picks. So that is something you do have to manually do here in your franchise mode if you're going to use my custom roster. So to make these trades, for one, I have a link in the description below to a nice website that lists all of the trades that you're going to have to do. So for example, just recently, the Patriots traded for Mohamed Sanu. So to complete the second round transfer to the New England Patriots, you're gonna to go to options, user management, create a new character. And you're gonna to wanna to select the team that in this scenario is getting the worst end of the trade. So for example, the Patriots are sending a second round pick in this situation for nothing because Mohamed Sanu will already be on the roster, but you do need to send that trade. So you're gonna to go to Trade Center, throw in that second round pick to the Falcons. I usually just, you know, because it's the preseason, there's gonna be uh, players, these are position minimums, don't ask about that. Uh, they'll get cut anyway. Uh, so just go ahead and trade for the lowest overall player on the roster. It'll get accepted and you're good to go there. So you're gonna go through, make all those trades. That process took about 10 minutes when I did it. And then this next step is completely optional, but again, highly recommended. And this is going to be changing the dev traits that are in the game, because in my opinion, there is a lot of dev traits and just superstar and superstar X Factor abilities that I don't want in my franchise, whether they're overpowered or I don't think certain players deserve them to begin with. Now this process is more timely. This takes about an hour for me to complete. So we're gonna demonstrate how you're gonna change just one player here. So for example, Carson Wentz, a player I recommend giving superstar abilities to as he does not have them in EA's roster. So you're gonna go to edit player, give him superstar development. Now. That's a pretty easy process, pretty straightforward. Now you will, of course, notice when you give a guy superstar or superstar X factor, he's going to receive abilities. And if you wanna get really specific here, which I like to do, you wanna make sure they're getting abilities that match what they are. Now, I'm not gonna get into every player and what abilities you should give them here. That is kind of up for you guys to decide. But a good example of this is going to be linebacker Deion Jones for the Atlanta Falcons. Currently only a star, I see him as one of the premier cover linebackers in the game. I think he should have superstar abilities to reflect that. So we give him superstar. But one thing you might notice when you do this is they might get abilities like secure tackler, which that's not really Deion Jones. He's more of a cover guy, right? Now there's a workaround, you can change their ratings so it changes their archetype and then re-roll what they get. And that is maybe a better thing to do in some situations. But the easiest way to address this, you're actually going to go back to the user management, create a new character, Falcons. You're gonna go with a player, active player, select Dion Jones, start playing. Now, why this wasn't in the game to begin with when you're a coach or an owner is beyond me, but when you're a player, you can actually change your ability. All you do is you go over to abilities, you click on it, and then we're gonna check tip drill. And then maybe when you over here, you'd go with zone specialists or something if the player was a 90. Again, why that's not in the game as a coach or an owner is absolutely beyond me. Maybe EA can add that shit. But for now, this is what you have to do. When you're done, go ahead and retire. Don't worry, the player will still be there when you're done. Now, one reason I recommend starting as a coach is if you have a player on the team that you want to play as and you pick an owner and then you switch to that player to change his traits, you then can't go back to being an owner. I don't know why, but just a heads up on that one, maybe start as a coach and then switch over to the owner. 
All right, so that is how you're gonna edit the dev traits, the superstar abilities, those are steps five and six. Next up, again, if you're using my custom roster, we're gonna set the force wins to get to our current point in time. Now, again, you can start from week one if you want, but if you go to league schedule, you go through, pull up uh, uh, you know, NFL.com, or just if you have really good memory, you can start setting these force wins. This process takes about five minutes, it's not too bad. And then you're gonna advance to week nine or wherever you are to get the current standings. There's a tie in there week one that you're gonna miss out on, but uh, not the end of the world. Now, before we keep moving, what I do recommend doing after you have set all of these things up, you're going to create a save point. This is why I recommend doing an offline and just call it base with the date. This way, if in two weeks you wanna do a new one, but you don't wanna do all these steps again, you can go ahead and just load it up from the beginning and all of those things are done. If you do an online franchise, you don't have the capability to do that. And then of course, create a secondary save file with the actual name that you would like. So we're gonna sim ahead here uh, just because there's a couple more steps here. So our ninth step here is going to be using formation subs, which I get a lot of questions about. This is a really cool way to you know, use different packages. If you have a fourth wide receiver who might be a good run blocker that you want in the slot on plays that you like to call inside zones out of shotgun, for example, you might put that better blocker in on certain formations. So you're gonna go over there to coach formation subs. I use these on defense a lot as well. And this is gonna be for the more knowledgeable uh, football fans as well. Um, but like say here in a 4-3, now the Browns just traded Jannard Avery, who's kind of a flex cover linebacker, edge defender. If we still had that player, I would play him. But maybe instead of a smaller Christian Kirksey, who doesn't really have the same pass rush skill sets as Sion Takitaki, who might be more of a tweener, in a 4-3 over, which is more of a 3-4 uh, scheme to you know, hide some different things. And this is pretty specific football talk, but basically you can create different formation looks and it's all gonna translate right into your franchise. You know, if I'm in this bunch formation and I know I like to have these outside receivers drag across, so I might want a faster receiver than Jarvis Landry, I might put Antonio Callaway on the side there. Now there are some frustrating glitches that you kind of have to work around. Like you can see, I just put them in here, but it didn't even put them there. So you're gonna have to like go find them where he went in and then try it again. It's not perfect as with a lot of things in this game, but it usually works. So I highly recommend doing that. There's also auto subs, which I get a lot of questions about, which is down here under formation subs. I usually don't touch these because I've never actually gotten them to work. Um, maybe other people in the comments can add to this conversation, but I just have kind of given up on trying to get those to work because I have not had much luck there. So then our final step here is going to be getting custom draft classes that match my roster. You can use EA's rosters. The ratings might be a touch higher, but all in all, they work pretty well. If you're interested in creating your own custom classes as well, because I'm working as fast as I can to get these classes done, I do have a guide for creating draft classes as well that I will post in the description. But to import a custom draft class, what you're gonna do is week three, you get the first opportunity to scout, so you're gonna go download from Matt and Share. Now, unfortunately, this is only going to be on Xbox. I don't have any update on a PlayStation 4 roster. I know there's people working on it, but I don't have an update as of this video. So at the top there, TFG 2020 rookies. My 2021 class should be out within a week or so of this video. So yeah, you're gonna go ahead and import that 2020 class and you will go ahead and have a full class compatible with your roster that you've used. And once I get that 2020 class, uh, 2021 class done, I will be starting to work on some fictional classes that will play nice as well. So that's really it. Those are the 10 steps for setting up your realistic franchise experience. I hope you found this helpful. Again, please do hit that like button. Cheers as always, and we'll see you for the next one. Peace.